How is we going, retro people? My name is Brad, this is Retro Style Spotlight, and this is your news, notes, history, and retro games to play for the week of June 14th, 2016. Last week's tutorial was all about my conquering of Mess. Mess was a very confusing emulator to deal with, but I finally got it. With that, I showed off the Atari 5200 with this tutorial and showed how to get Mess up and running with some very important detail. Mess is a little confusing, so if you have any questions about it, please leave comments in this video, the tutorials video, or make a thread over on our forums and ask your questions there. In other news, Jason and I have announced that we will be going to Retropalooza this October 1st and 2nd. Even better news, we are now a part of the official sponsor list for the Retropalooza event in Arlington, Texas. If you are going to be in that area that weekend and would love to come say hi to us in person, we'll have our booth open with a Launchbox demo and maybe some other goodies. Alongside having a booth, Jason and I would love to be on panels or have one of our own potentially. So we would love it if our community could tweet to Retropalooza asking for Jason or myself to be on any emulation based or appropriate panels. The tweet will be in the description below, just copy and paste. In ROM hacking and translation news, we all know that when games don't get localized to our native language that it kind of sucks and we feel like we miss out on some awesome games. Brownie Brown's early GBA JRPG Magical Vacation has finally been fan translated. While the sequel on DS saw a worldwide release, this gem never did. What's more impressive is that this was only announced a few months ago and if I recall I did a story on this game actually. Either way, it's out now in a shockingly fast manner. Get the patch below. Do you like game demakes like Guitar Hero to NES or other awesome looking conversions? If you also like the recent puzzle exploration game The Witness, then you'll certainly love this demake. The game, called The Wit.NES, was created by Dustin Long of Studio Dustmop, and it only took him a few months to translate the world and puzzles to a more abstract version. The map looks more akin to Zelda 2, but it looks appropriate to explore. Only containing 32 different puzzles, the game does focus more on the path tracing puzzle mechanic due to limitations. If you'd like to test out the demake, then head on over to the itch.io page at the link below and download the custom ROM to use on an NES emulator. No ROM patching required, and it may even find its way to a real cartridge at some point. Have you ever wanted to create remixed video game music for sites like OC Remix or your own website? A new audio creation tool called Super Audio Cart looks to serve that market for a specifically tuned audio creation tool to create video game inspired tunes and at an affordable price. Starting at $150, Super Audio Cart has over 5,500 samples in total collected from seven different video game consoles, including Atari 2600, Commodore 64, Sega Master System, Game Boy, Sega Genesis, NES, and SNES. The engine will have over 1,000 vintage and modern presets and a 64 slot custom mod matrix. Check it out even if you have a passing interest in creating some great music. This month in 1995, Mother 2, known as Earthbound in America, gets its English localization or release to the rest of the world. Earthbound, known as Mother 2 in Japan, is a 1994 a Japanese role-playing video game co-developed by Ape Inc. and HAL Laboratory and published by Nintendo for the Super NES. As Ness and his party of four, the player travels the world to collect melodies en route to defeating an evil alien force at Gygus. It is the second game of the Mother series and the only one to be released in the English language until its predecessor was released under the name Earthbound Beginnings in 2015 as part of Wii U's Virtual Console. The game had a lengthy development period which spanned five years. Its making involved a number of Japanese luminaries including writer Shikisato Itoi, musician-songwriter Keiichi Suzuki, sound designer Hirokazu Tanaka, and future Nintendo president Satoru Iwata. Themed around an idiosyncratic portrayal of Americana and Western culture, it subverted popular role-playing game traditions by featuring a real-world setting while parodying numerous staples of the genre. Itoi, who directed the game, wanted to reach non-gamers with its intentionally goofy tone. It was heavily marketed upon release via a promotional campaign which sardonically proclaimed, This game stinks. So that was Retro Style Spotlight for the week of June 14th, 2016. All the relevant links to everything you heard in this edition of RSS will be in the description below. Remember, you can sign up for a Launchbox Forum account to talk with us over there. If Launchbox has given you a beautiful library of games, then why not purchase a premium license of Launchbox for $20 to access Big Box, which is a controller and couch-oriented version of Launchbox. 
We also have our Launchbox Games database now available for users to contribute to. If you have a few favorite games that are lacking in metadata or media, head on over to the games page on the database and make your desired edits. Jason and I have a lot planned for our community, so if you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're doing a tutorial video every Friday and more entertainment type shows like this in the future. Let us know what you think of RSS and any feedback you may have on it. My name is Brad, and remember, Freaks and Geeks, to play more games, and we'll see you next time. Have a good day!